Hey, hey, what's going on YouTube? Hey, Blading on the Brain. I am bringing you an episode that I've been working really, 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 really hard on. And so what I really wanna tell you guys, is a little bit different. Um, this is something that I wanna go in. This is the direction that I wanna also explore with this episode, which is looking at my symptoms from TBI, from my traumatic brain injury, and really starting to bring awareness to the issues of mental health that a lot of TBI survivors and people in recovery face on a day to day. And so I really wanna bring that to light in my channel. So Blading on the Brain is a lot about my recovery, my journey back into blading, and it's also honest tales of what it's like to have a TBI, come back from a TBI, and what the recovery process really is. And a lot of that's gonna be journaling and some diary entries, and that's what today is. So today, this is an episode that I've been working on for quite some time, just to give you a um, just give you some timeline as to how long this has taken for me to put together and when this occurred. So this video is a lot of footage from my time when my family went to Maine for a July vacation. We went and saw family in Maine and family in Brooklyn, New York. And what you're going to see in this episode coming up is just that. It's notes from my trip. These are actual journal accounts from my time in Maine. And it was a very interesting time in terms of timing. We went to Maine in late July, and as we transitioned from Maine to New York, I got home to a place that I feel really comfortable in and immediately received the news about Rob G's tragic incident down in Peru. So I stopped everything in terms of making this episode about my trip to Maine and made the episode that you can see here. Yeah, cards. Do you guys know what cards are? Cards pop up. I'm gonna start using a lot of cards. They pop up in the corner up there and you can click on it and you can find viable information about other videos I've done as well as polls and questions that I'm proposing to you, the community, YouTube. I wanna know from you guys what you feel, what you like, what you are enjoying and what maybe potentially I should change. So check out the card. It's for the Rob G episode. I made that episode in New York right after finding out the news and literally right after coming I would say back to a happy place. Maine, my trip to Maine was not the most happy of vacations. It wasn't the most enjoyable. It was actually really stressful and challenging. I dealt for the first time in my life with issues around the symptoms from TBI. Mania, depression, these are all very real and I, for the first time in my life I've dealt with them and I never had that occurrence. So what you're gonna see is a deeper episode today. This episode are the real accounts of what it felt like to be in Maine and how race plays an important role in traumatic brain injury recovery, at least for me. Um, I obviously am an African-American male and there are a lot of feelings that I have about being an African-American male in America that kind of manifest in different ways now that I'm returning from my traumatic brain injury and dealing with recovery and the symptoms that come along with it. And so I hope you guys look at this episode as insights into what it is to be inside my brain or inside of the mind of someone who's had a traumatic brain injury and is coming back. Um, I hope this gives you shed lights on the, the struggles, the amazing ability that we have to come back from and to transcend and overcome barriers because we really, really do. And as always, if you don't know my story, Check the intro video. Boom, another card. <laughs> I should get really good at this. Um, check the intro video, click on that. As always, click down in the left. There's a little click me button. That allows you to subscribe to the channel. I really wanna have more subscribers. I wanna get this channel up to 500. We're now at about 228, which is amazing. And I know that as a community, we can get this up to 500. And I really wanna start seeing the comments become a space where people can talk about their recovery or about injuries they've had or about feelings they've had or just open up to each other it's a great space for all of us to talk to each other about what it is to have a head injury 
to come back from a head injury and what those feelings that we have are inside of us that are sometimes really hard to express, really hard to understand, and even more so, hard to tell to other people. So today's episode is a journaling of my time in Maine. I hope you guys enjoy it. I really hope it sheds light on the issues that we all face as humans in America and all around the world who are dealing with traumatic brain injury and recovery. As always, thank you, YouTube. I really, really appreciate all the love and support and I hope you enjoy. What's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? Blading on the Brain. It's your boy, Kenneth Scott, back at you from a sunny spot today, right here on the beaches on the opposite side of the coast. Yeah, I'm not even in Cali no more. Yeah, but you know, these are my kind of beaches, to be honest with you. I like them rough, rocky beaches. Maybe it's a metaphor for my life. You know, it's beautiful on the end, but the task to get there is rough and arduous, and I like that rocky terrain, I guess. That's really what I'm about. I don't like them sandy, pristine beaches, to be quite honest with you. That's not my thing. And this sand get all up in your hair and stuff, all up in you everywhere. But I don't know. It's been an interesting, interesting time out here in Maine. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know much about Maine, but it's about a million people deep, and of that million, 1% is African American. And for me, that's really odd and I'm out here and to be honest with a TBI it's really hard to control your emotions when you feel isolated and you feel left out and you feel like people's staring at you all the time like I'm here in a bigger city and I'm happy because I see a lot more African-American people there's a lot more brown people in this part of town and so you know shout outs to Baja because I say that right Baja because um to be honest it made me feel more comfortable than where I have been most recently in Maine so I found this casual spot. It's right on the water. You know, I, <clears throat> it's funny because, you know, that might have come off a little wrong, um, saying that Maine's not diverse, and but like, that's not what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about my experience as somebody who's had a traumatic brain injury. It's been really nice to have this moment to myself without, I came here with family and I love my family to death. And it's just been a little bit more challenging to have to deal with all the feelings that I get um, with other people around in an in unfamiliar environment. And so I don't often suffer from depression and, and that's a common symptom of a traumatic brain injury, but I do often suffer from emotional regulation and, and suffer from a lack of the ability to contextualize my feelings, especially if I get hit with a lot of stimulus and a lot of experiences at one time and I'm not in what I perceive to be a safe place and so being here has been a struggle and I, I'll be honest with you I'm really excited to go back to my home New York and we do that in a few days and because I don't know when you're prone to getting angry and you feel ostracized and you feel different and you don't have a way to express that it it, it wells up inside and I've had days where I just, my wife was there for me really because I was just overwhelmed by my own emotions, uh, feelings of isolation, feelings of, of manic rage, and then followed by quick depression and sobbing and tears. Um, it's been a challenging trip. It's been only a few days and just to be away from Oakland is, is a challenge. I feel like it's important for me to to express all sides of my experience. And up until now, Blading on the Brain has been purely about the joy and the struggle, but like the productive struggle. And to, today, I kind of want to talk about something a little bit deeper. So I hope it's not too somber. I don't know, I feel really comfortable just talking about, I guess I keep looking over my shoulder, I'm only so comfortable. But just talking about what it feels like to be here, to be me, um, about eight months out from my injury and there are hard days, there are hard moments, there's hard times. Um, shout outs to my wife for always reeling me in, making sure that I express this and blading on the brain, you're just another expression. So those who are listening, I hope this resonates with some and bring sheds lights to the experiences that others have to some of you who don't deal with TBI or know somebody with a TBI. So while here, my anxiety, um, my depression has manifested in several ways um, I guess how to say this 
I'm gonna sound a little crazy, but it's just my story. It's just how I've expressed my feelings and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I felt like it was worth sharing. So I've been feeling a lot of, I don't know, isolation, especially being deep in the middle of the forest where we're staying. And so one day after probably feeling my worst, I ran out into the forest and just found the highest rock I could stand on and just started screaming out lyrics to DNA from Kendrick Lamar. And for those who don't know, you know, those lyrics are, I don't want to say controversial because they're not, but they're empowering for me because they talk about how, you know, we are born of kings. And, and for me, it was an uh, opportunity to reestablish my right to be here by saying that I'm firm on this planet because I'm firmly entrenched as a king from birth. And that was one way. So I, I just like ripped my shirt off and started screaming, Kendrick. Lamar damn lyrics. I kind of saw it as an opportunity to make a mix of empowering hits from Kendrick Lamar. Things that, in recovery, to be honest, have always made me feel better and more prepped to take on the work that I, the challenges that I just put on myself normally, whether it be professional or personal. Um, so in that, I listened to the black of the berry, you know, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, the black of the berry, the bigger I shoot. Um, you know, I listened to We Gonna Be All Right. You know, I just, I needed that moment to vent. I was frustrated and I wasn't feeling heard. As much as hitting my head on December 10th is a part of my traumatic brain injury experience, so is being an African-American male in America. And I'm not gonna filter that and I'm not gonna pretend that that's not a part of what I deal with every day um, as I learn to endure and as I learn to cope and as symptoms slowly fade and some become more prominent, you know, my DNA is very much a part of my experience as a, a male how I felt before but I don't have the same capacity for placating or for acting the part or for being tolerant that I used to you know feeling like the only black person for miles gets to you feeling like you're the only black person on a private estate where everybody else might look at you as like why you're here that's scary and so I took that opportunity to speak loudly for everyone here everyone in that valley everyone in that forest I wanted them to hear me loud and clear and I wanted to be as aggressive as I could and what's most challenging is that you know then I listened to Mortal Man and I got to Mortal Man and I started to cry and uh, I'm gonna cry now because that's when I got real depressed because then I started feeling like what's all this grandiose behavior what's this what's this desire to like seek attention and and, and put you fir firmly in the ground if like in the end, you're just sad. Like, you know, like you're not, you're mad, but you're more frustrated. I sat for a while solo, no one around, just in a place that <laughs> oddly enough was just ashes and rocks, nothing organic, nothing living. And I contemplated my existence for a little bit. And um, then I went in the house. And my wife was there and she allowed me space to just vent and space to cry and I needed that and but more importantly I needed to feel heard I needed to know that somebody in the group was looking out for my interests because I was having a hard time expressing my needs in a space where I felt uncomfortable and to be honest really scared um, you know it's like I don't I don't fault nobody for not knowing what my lens looks like as an African-American male. But what I, what I do appreciate is when people step out there side themselves to empathize with what that must be like. I mean, you're talking about out of a population of a million in an entire state, there's only 10,000 black people. And I'm talking about Sudanese and everyone tell me about some Sudanese, but I, all of us, only 10,000. And if one third of that city, if one third of that population for the whole state is in Portland, then the outskirts, let's be honest, right? Think about that carryover. So, yeah, it's been an interesting struggle. And today I just felt comfortable, I guess, enough to say it somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what you think it is about this place. I think it's just soothing. It's beautiful.
right? I felt like comfortable to, to journal this, to say this to a camera, and chop it up and edit it for YouTube. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Blading on the Brain and YouTube for watching this episode. I really do hope it shed light on just the varied degrees of struggle that we go through with this invisible injury. No one would know that I have a brain injury. I don't look any different. I don't often act very different, but there are times where it's really a struggle and it's really hard. And I really thank you, Blading on the Brain, for giving me a space to express these different feelings and to be myself. So I hope you liked, I hope you enjoyed. As always, like, comment, ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos. Thank you to Chris Beer for the motion graphics. Thank you to my boy Uranus for the track Money Train. I'll see you guys next episode. Peace.